okay so hey guys it's question and today we're going to look at the AVL tree so the AVL tree is a very important data structure an abstract data structure which gives you n log n results that is the complexity it is a binary search tree which you balance and optimize in order to get results faster which means that if you have suppose you have a binary tree in which you enter 10 and then you enter 20 and then you enter 30 and 40 and 50 and as you go on and on increasing the values the elements will be stored on the right hand side only because they are greater than one another so if that happens you will have only a right sided binary tree because of which you know it's it's basically a link list only in a diagonal direction you see which means that if you have to search for an element which is let's say 70 we'll have to go through 10 20 30 40 50 which is not really ideal so in order to avoid that kind of a situation you have these balanced AVL trees which after every insertion into the tree the tree rebalances itself in order to have proper search capacities so the most important thing you have to know is how to rotate and how to adjust the balances and, and get the height of the tree. So I have linked a few links in the description where you can actually learn physically how to do the AVL tree rotations and you can watch those or there is an awesome course on um, the MIT courses website which is pretty amazing. But uh, for now let's just look at the code and see what's happening. So this is the code which is uh, which we are going to discuss I've just uh, defined the main function um, we, by the way we're going to cover this in Python don't worry it's not that hard if you understand how to do it in Python you probably will understand how to do it in other languages because well the logic is important not the language the syntax changes the logic remains the same okay so not a big deal here we define the main function in the main function we have root equal to make root here I'm developing the root okay now we'll look at the make root function and where it is we we'll go up and the make root function is right over here okay and in the make root function I'm not doing a lot of stuff I'm just returning the node okay if you have done binary search trees before you would know that in order to construct a binary tree you need to first create a node which you're gonna access I have created the node up top over here in this class node I've made that the, as a class uh, if you're doing it in C, you might uh, declare a structure. If you're doing it in Java, you might still use a node, which is a class. But if you're doing some other language, you might have different syntax. Okay, the syntax changes, but the logic remains the same. So our node here consists of a key, that is a data value, right pointer, left pointer, and a height variable. So this actually takes care of the height. It increments itself once it as it goes down at the bottom of the tree and you have right and left which is probably just pointers which point to right now they're pointing to nothing in python null is represented by none and uh, yeah so this is the constructor basically when you put past the value inside here it creates the node it's basically very simple so first you make the root the first line of the main function is to create the root next what i'm going to do is for x in range of 0 to 5, root will be equal to insert root random dot rand int 0, 100. Now what am I doing here? Let's go up top. Import random. I'm importing the random class, which uh, helps us to generate, well, guess what? Random numbers. <laughs> so for x in range of 0 to 5, this is basically a for loop which runs from 0 to 4, one less than the last number x in range of 0 so we go from 0 1 2 3 and 4 so root will be equal to insert root comma random dot randint 0 comma 100 okay it's not that big of a deal so we are inserting the elements that is one element at a time inside the root and giving that return value to the root so when we insert something basically we want to check out the insert function right so we inserted suppose 5 in this okay then we go in here insert 5 where is the insert function right over here go to the insert function which is right over here okay let's not 
uncomment this let's uncomment this and then here we have current which is our current node and key so then we check if current is equal to equal to node return node of key now we create a new node over here which will return it so the key is assigned to key value uh, because it's a constructor right so then right is none left is none and height is one so you pass that and, and if current is none, you return the node value. Now the most important part in this piece of code is these are these two lines. Now why are these so important? Because when you execute these lines, you can come back through the stack inside these this um, path and go through this entire code over here. And going through this code is very important because this is where the actual balancing takes place. Now let's go through it one by one. So now we checked here if current is equal to none. It's not. So then it will check if key is less than current dot key. That is the basic binary search tree syntax. It just checks if the key is less than the current key. If it is, you go on the left hand side. If it is not, you go on the right hand side. So current dot left will be equal to insert current dot left dot key comma key so this is basically a recursive insert function so if this is true if key is less than current dot key and you pass in current dot left will be equal to insert current dot left comma key then if current dot left is equal to none if current because current dot left when you pass in the function it will be denoted by current and there, there you check if current is equal to equal to none return node key and the key node will be formed and will be returned back in this stack function because the function is now in the stack right so we'll come back it will pop the function from the stack and resume it from here so current.left will now be another value similarly if a uh, key is less than sorry key is greater than or equal to current.key it will come over here current.write equal to insert current.write comma key and the same thing, it will pop, up, pop the function of the stack, resume this kind of code, and then come back and then resume this part of the code. So that's so this is pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, you can move further. This is basically just creating a binary tree. It's not a big deal. It's just creating a binary tree. Now, the code which we have on the screen right now will create a basic binary tree. The code which is not commented out, that code will create a basic binary tree. But we are not here for that. We want to create something more. We need to create the avl tree so let's do that so then we check for the height so we, we want to update the height of the node which we are referencing by current so current dot height will be equal to max of height current dot left and height current dot right plus one so what is max of current so this is the max function i made this function up top over here this is the max function and what does it do it just says that it takes two uh, int values, int variables, and um, it checks. If A is greater than B, return A, else return B. Okay, simple. It's just It just returns the maximum value of the two parameters. Okay, so I'll check here. Max of the first parameter is height of current.left. So I'll check the height of the left and the height of the right. The one which is greater, I add that with one, and give it to current dot height. Okay, where, where's the height function? The height function is right over here. So I check def height of current. Okay, if current equal to equal to none, return zero. Else, return current dot height. Okay, not a big deal. Then you go down here. You check the balance of the tree. The balance is basically the height of the left minus the height of the right so you go balance this is a function and you pass in the current node and the balance function is right over here so here you go balance of current if current is equal to equal to none obviously there is nothing to be done because that's a none uh, it, it's not an, an allocated memory space so return zero return equal to height of current dot left and height of current dot right that's what i said the height function is basically over here and it returns the height of the currently pointing node obviously so that's what you get by the balance function height of left minus height of right 
then you go with your and I'll just uh, print in the balance for debugging sake because this program requires a lot of debugging and then I'm gonna check okay you if you have seen the video which I linked in the description or the link which I've linked link in the description you might have realized that uh, you have to do you have to check if the avl3 is in left left mode or right left mode or left left mode or right right mode or and those kind of different uh, scenarios so i've uh, listed a few conditions which will go one by one okay so if balance is greater than one and key is less than current dot left dot key so what does this mean it's it means that it's in left left as in if you have 10 20 30 those are in left left mode when you insert 10 20 30 in the binary tree we have 10 20 and 30 left to left to left okay okay so then you have uh, those kind of arrangements and then you check if the key you inserted key is based gonna be the last value you inserted so key is greater than or less than so in the case of 10 20 30 if you insert them you'll probably get key which is 30 which is the last element you inserted is greater than but it's not less than right so if we will check the right right because 10 20 30 is basically right right not left left so you go balance is less than minus one yes obviously because you can check if you don't believe me then you check key if key is greater than current dot right dot key well it is so then you rotate left current now rotate left what does rotate left mean it means that you want to take the node which you are pointing to below the node uh, or pointing to the left of the node which is left to the current I'll, I'll tell you what that means okay let's go to this function rotate left okay the, there are two functions here rotate right and rotate left let's check out the rotate left function then we'll check out the rotate right function okay what am i doing here print execute this is just a debug statement okay so here I'm passing let's let x be the the current node i passed in current over here so that is the node which is current over here okay so y will be equal to x of right so the right value of x is given to y it's just a temporary variable holder i'm not rotating anything right now and t2 will be equal to y dot left iska the 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 left value of y will be given to t2 okay then you start rotating now here we start rotating we give the value y dot left will be equal to x if you imagine that y is on the right hand side of x but now i'm saying that y dot left will be equal to x if you have a pen and paper you can actually draw this out on a piece of paper and you'll realize that oh yeah this is s uh, denote the variables by x y and t2 and then perform these two operations and then you will realize oh my god this is a left rotation or oh my god this is a right rotation because it's it's not that difficult if you just have a piece of paper you can really just understand what am i doing here what i am doing here okay the same thing goes for this part i've just replaced y by x and x by y which is not really that hard to do and yeah the rest of the things are the same then you check the height the height is going to be y dot left max of so y height will be equal to y dot left and y dot right uh, the max of that plus one okay and yeah well the, the the only part remaining is this part where we check if the balance if balance is greater than one and key is greater than left dot key which means that this is a left right um, notation it's, it's a left right organization even in the left right is the same thing execute these sta statements on a piece of paper take a few examples in this case you can take an example for left and right you can take an example of uh, 10 8 and 9 they are good examples and you can perform these operations with a piece of paper and hold this and yeah it's pretty simple right and and the intuition behind this program is this the intuition behind this program is basically you have to realize these two statements now these two statements are very important or four statements are very important because they help you 
to execute these statements okay because if you didn't have a return value to this this won't be executing in the stack if you just had a return value over here then this won't be executed right now what I did to understand this program and while making it is actually take a piece of paper and uh, take a few AVL3 you know problems like 1 2 3 4 25 1 2 3 stuff like that and then execute them on the piece of paper and solve them well, on a piece of paper <laughs> that's all I can say for you right now let's solve them and this is the pre-order if I execute this you can see that it runs you can see that it runs perfectly and this is the root and it runs perfectly okay now yeah I just put some random numbers Okay, let, let, let me print the random numbers uh, over here or maybe maybe not okay so this is how you do the binary tree with the AVL modifications um, it's pretty amazing how, what you can achieve by this this has a log and a com complexity which is pretty awesome considering that it's just a this short of program program now what I'm saying is uh, the when you're converting between Python and C and Java and whatever the syntax might change quite a bit but the underlying logic remains the same okay so yeah that's about it thanks for watching avl3 guys